going on? Welcome back. Worst F here. And today's video is a response to somebody on Facebook named Jeremy. Uh, quick shout out to this guy. I'm not going to blow up his spot like that, but he's got a really interesting question here. And I'm going to go into it real quickly and then I'll answer it and uh, the best way I can because I think this question is a question that I, I personally get asked all the time on streams and on my comments here. Like, what is the best starting team or a best team that you can focus on earlier on in the game for all beginners here so let's go into this question here hey team i'm at a crossroads at the moment i can start to invest time and gear into either fantastic four or asgard what will be the strongest team overall for raids and blitz and so on and so forth i'm thinking fantastic four because there will be a constant heal whereas asgard have limited heals and will get chipped away in the long run all right so jeremy this one is for you buddy shout outs to you this question is very, very complicated, but not really. First of all, the two teams that you're talking about, Asgard or Fantastic Four, completely serve in two different factions in the game, all right? They're both terrific for war. One is really, really awesome on defense, Asgardians, insanely powerful on defense. Fantastic Four are actually their exact counter on offense. So in order to counter Asgardians, you need Fantastic Four both really incredible teams that you're going to want to work on both together but the easy choice here is asgard you're going to need asgardians guys and this is for all beginner players if you're starting off new into the game uh if you're just you know not like a week old but as soon as you get to that point where you're unlocking a bunch of these characters here and asgardians are basically now starting to become free to play you're gonna need a while to farm them, but you gotta start farming as guardians right away, guys. Because for a couple of different reasons. Now, you need as guardians in order to unlock Black Bolt, right? So that's the main purpose why you need to work on as guardians. Not only for war defense, but you need to get yourself a Black Bolt because he's incredible. And then you're gonna need Inhumans in order to unlock Ebony Maw, which is gonna be insanely powerful. Coming pretty soon when uh, the Black Order is released and Thanos, if you didn't see my video on that, I got a video made for the Black Order. Go check that out, guys. It's incredible. So, so let's get into this. Let's talk about what we need for the Black Order, the four new characters that are going to be coming out, and the upgrades happening to Thanos as well. So this is phenomenal, man. This is some good news here. I'm really excited about this, guys. So let's get started. That's the main reason why you're going to need yourself the Asgardians. So now moving on to your direct questions about Raid and Blitz. And everything else in the game as guardians are still going to be your number one pick man to be honest uh, i know you say that there's not a consistent healer on as guardians but don't forget the hella heals tremendously on this team they go into stealth once they go a certain percentage of health they got a lot of different things to sustain i can basically auto any uh ultimus six raid with as guardians not even that powerful and all the greek raids you can pretty much do with as guardians whenever they're required as well so as guardians are pretty good in all aspects of the game for blitz both teams are equally viable in my opinion at 8.3 they can both win a bunch of different matchups so that's that so all in all guys as guardians are easily your number one pick when it comes to choosing between fantastic four and as guardians and personally like i said before i would put them even better than uh, Fantastic Four in terms of which team you should work on first just because of Black Bolt and then Ebony Maw. You're going to need that one, guys. It's a definitely requirement here. You're literally going to miss out on two legendaries if you don't work on Asgardians. So they are my number one beginner team to start working on. Whether you're free to play, you're still going to be able to get them or you're going to pay some money to get them even earlier. You got to go with Asgardians, all right? So let's just go into this team real quick. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and jump in right into my Asgardians and I will show you guys uh, what I've been doing with them and how far they've come along here. So as you can see, I've got my OG Asgardians, Thor and Loki from back in the day. That's why they're the most enhanced ones, <laughs> if you can call it that. And I got pretty lucky on Loki. I got six red stars. <laughs> that was terrible. Not really terrible. I mean, you can't complain, but I would rather have it on anybody else, to be honest. Uh, especially Thor. He's the one that you really would love to have as many red stars as you can on. So really quickly here, you guys can see what I did with my T4s, but I'm just going to break down what they do individually here. So um, most likely, uh, Loki is going to be your number one attacker here. Mind Control, his special ability, is going to apply a defense down for two turns on one of your, your enemies here. And then two other enemies are going to attack. That's why I T4'd this, because I wanted two people to attack instead of just one. Mirror Image is going to put Stealth for two turns onto all your allies. That's why I T4'd this one, because it's a two-turn Stealth which is really, really important, and it actually can save you in a lot of tough spots here. God of Mischief is crucial 
because of the res, all right? So if you want to T4 this, you give you give your enemies a negative 10% res reduction, which uh, obviously is better for you. Same thing as focus, except the opposite, all right? The more focus you have, the more uh, chances you have to apply your debuffs, the less of their resistance is, you know, obviously the, the better chances you, you are. So if you have a high focus, low resistance, it's perfect. So that's basically what Loki does. And then you can come in with your Hela and with her ultimate here, it's a five turn cooldown, but it starts off full, which means you right away you're going to be able to boom, go ahead and spread all those negative defenses down. You can also spread uh, heal blocks from Greg there as well, all right? So her special ability, ability is actually pretty crucial as well because you're going to be able to apply Disrupt for two turns instead of one, which is pretty awesome in my opinion here. It's a three turn cooldown. And it starts off full in a perfect world you can go ahead and use her special right away apply the disrupt they're gonna get heal block and they're gonna be able to get that defense down and then the next turn go ahead and uh spread all those to everybody else that would really benefit you but the problem is that this is a full turn so on defense which most likely there are more defense this one will go ahead and pop out first so that's the tricky part here her passive ability here is going to gain more health to her which is really really good and max health per as guardian ally and then five percent de uh, damage on war defense so this one is another one of her abilities that you want to t t4 as well so here's the thing with hella guys she's so expensive man she's crazy crazy expensive one of the most the biggest gold diggers in the game if you ask me i mean take a look at all her abilities here at gear tier 12 in order to get her to 13 it's like getting another hero to 14 i mean she's got so many of these gear tier 14 items it's insane every single one of her items is a uh, is things that you need for gear tier 14 that's why i say she's very very expensive and then all the abilities gain you know get boosted up if you t4 them so she's one of those heroes guys that it's not going to be cheap but it's way worth it she's incredible she's such a good hero in the game for all around not just as guardians but especially as guardians and then we jump into thor here thor is just literally guys just does a ton of damage all right you might want to T4 his uh, passive ability. 5% damage on him could definitely help since all he does is just dish out damage. And then uh, when he's max charged another 20% to all enemies, it's really good. We take a look at his ultimate ability here. Not only does it do a ton of damage, but if you T4 this, guys, you have a 50% chance to apply stun to every single target, right? So it's a 50% chance per target, meaning hits this target, 50% chance that he gets stunned. Next target, 50% chance they get stunned. That's incredible. I love this ability, there's only one downfall, and that is it's a 6 turn cooldown ability, starts off at 3, which means you can't use it until your 3rd turn in battle, and by then, most people are dead, so that's the only downside. I really wish that as Guardians had some type of way where they can distribute energy across each other, maybe in the future they'll do that, but for now, they don't have that, which means he's gotta wait 3 turns to use this ultimate ability, but that is really, really sweet, and then his basic and... And special here it just does damage guys all right just a ton of ton of damage and then every time as guardians get attacked this guy will come in and just attack everybody else so aoe damage he's really uh, awesome heimdall uh really free to play friendly you got him in your arena store so that's one good thing here and then another thing that he does is he raises focus gain 30 percent focus uh as guardians gain 30 percent focus uh he also has a crazy resistance towards blind right so as guardians have a lot a really really high res towards blind as well which means really great countering magnetos and such and star lords and things like that so that's what i like about him and then he's got some extra healing per turn per non minion as guardian so heimdall comes in handy in that sort of a way here and then he does a little bit of damage here also applies heal block so aoe damage as well another aoe here flip stealth on each enemy if they have stealth pia this guy will take get rid of it here so they got a little bit of counter to uh, invisible women with their stealth magneto with his blind uh, all because of heimdall here so he's a crucial part of the team and then we go into their protector uh sif i really enjoy uh, you know using sif as well i might take her to my dark dimension 3 because she's skill cosmic skill so i got a good amount of those items saved up uh, so all in all, all her abilities are basically just damage. If you take a look at a special here, just damage, gain taunt, but it doesn't really increase. If you T4 those, you don't really want to T4 any of these. Uh, this one here, you might want to T4 because it, it'll rebound for a couple of extra heroes, but not really necessary. Her Defender of Asgard, her passive is the only thing that you might want to T4. 10% block chance is 
quite a bit and then another 5% block amount is really good too. So she's going to have a higher chance to block and then a higher chance and then blocking a few more as well so she can last a little bit longer in the battle because she is the protector after all. So that's all in all of As Guardians guys. They really work great together and like I said in war defense they are phenomenal. They're so so good because they get so many bonuses just for being in the defense in war. So uh, this right here is the number one team that I would recommend you guys work on as a free to play player or basically starting off in the game if you're new you're just beginning to the game find yourself some as guardians and start putting some things on them right away guys you're gonna need them tremendously all right let's jump into some fantastic four all right guys so here we are with the fantastic four and as you can see there's only four of them obviously no pun intended but uh namor is actually not part of the fantastic four so let's take a look at these guys really quickly here and uh, the main hero of the fantastic four is obviously their legendary invisible woman she is incredible she's a protector she's bio cosmic so uh you know, getting her to your Dark Dimension 3 team is actually not a bad idea. So, let's take a look at what I t for for her right away. I mean, everything. She's so good. So, here's her special ability here. Clear two negative effects from self and all allies. Apply stealth to self and all allies. And then apply defense up for two turns to self and all allies. It is incredible, guys. Oh, I t for this because it clears two negative effects from self and all of your allies. That's incredible. That really comes in handy pretty basically everywhere and then applying the defense up so you not only are you in stealth but you're getting defense up this ability is really great now this ability here is even better six turn cooldown this is her uh ultimate ability and it starts off full so a lot of times you might have to actually make a decision whether you're gonna go for a special or you're gonna go for her ultimate here but this one applies defense down for two turns and also applies barrier on your team Obviously, you might want to start with their ultimate right away. You need that barrier as fast as you can. And then you want to apply those offense up as fast as you can as well. And then her passive ability, when an enemy attacks this character with barrier, attack the enemy for 250% damage. When an enemy attacks Fantastic Four allies with barrier, attack that enemy for 250% damage. So basically, anytime they attack, anytime they attack you, you attack back with her for 250% damage. So it's really uh, great a lot of times this ability can finish off a target here so i really enjoy what she's got to offer there and then she gains 20 percent max health fantastic four and namor gain 20 you know five percent max health and then with her basic she just basically attacks and then uh barrier herself for five percent of this character's max health so she applies a little bit more barrier to herself with her basic so all in all really awesome uh kit for her guys she's really a lot of fun to use you can use her all around not just for the fantastic four so she's a great A character here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the thing. I really actually like using the thing quite a bit here. This guy does a ton of damage, man. He does so much damage. In war, he basically just takes anybody out with his ultimate here, Haymaker. 490% damage. And uh, normally I don't recommend you guys T4 abilities that just add a little percent of damage. But for this guy, I might actually do this because he just kicks butt everywhere. He takes people out. And th this one attack primary target, bonus attack 1 to 2 damage. You might want to T4 this as well. You might want to T4 this as well because the 2 attacks, guaranteed 2 attacks, uh, most likely will kill somebody by how hard he hits. Uh, it's clobbering time is another great ability here. When, it, when being attacked, attack the enemy for 125% damage. So he always counter attacks. And this ability is especially good uh, when we consider uh, clones. And that's why kind of this team works against Asgardians quite a bit too guys because... Whenever you go into stealth or uh, Loki goes into stealth, then you got Invisible Woman that actually takes the stealth off everybody. But in the meantime, whenever the clones attack the thing, he counterattacks them back. And so does Invisible Woman. She also hits because they have barrier and takes out all those clones really easy so you don't have to waste abilities on them. So that's why this is such a good counter to your Asgardians as we talked about. And then uh, uh, Human Torch here is... Also, a really sweet hero here. Let's take a look at his abilities here. Gain offense up. Wow. Gain plus two offense up for a maximum of five. Apply one offense up to a maximum of three to all Fantastic Four allies. So, gaining offense up is phenomenal. Supernova, this ability here. The only sad part is it's such a long... Look at it. Eight turn cooldown. It's so incredible that that's how long it takes, guys. Not only does it attack for 400% damage, but apply offense up to all of your enemies. If you T4 this, it's incredible. But I'm noticing a lot of times he doesn't even make it to using this ability most of the time because it's such a long-term cooldown that he's usually dead or the battle's over by then, honestly. So 
a lot of times I'm not really using that ability. Flame on, on turn, flip two negative effects to self to positive effects. So if he's got negative effects, they automatically uh, flipped and then gain 30% damage. Your Fantastic Four and Amor gain 30% more damage. So not only is he applying off itself, but he's also giving you more damage. It's incredible. Headshot here, just basically more damage. Or apply bleed. So he's got a really awesome kit here as well. And not only is that, but his look is phenomenal. I love, uh, you know, everything about him here. And then basically, Mr. Fantastic, the daddy of the team here. We're going to jump into his passive right away. Gain 60% focus and resistance for self and Fantastic Four and Amor Allies. So 60% focus and res. That's quite impressive, guys. That's a cool, that's a lot. On self and each Fantastic Four Allies turn, 100% chance to apply assist. That's why I love T4 in this ability. And this one is... Uh, it's so good. On turn, choose three negative random enemies. If they have a positive effect, remove one. So he does so many things, guys. Not only does he remove negative uh, positive effects from your opponents, he gives you 60% focus and res, and then plus he assists. 100% chance to assist uh, Namor and your Fantastic Four allies. So every time they attack, they get a, another basic attack. And then it basically works like this. Invisible Woman will counter back if they hit anything with barrier. If they hit the thing, he will attack back and she will attack back right away. If they attack, then Mr. Fantastic will assist. And they just work so great together. It's such a great pairing here. And let's not forget the final member of the Fantastic Four here. Namor, Namor, just this giganto ability here. Attack all enemies for 300% damage. And then on war defense, this attack always crits. <laughs> clears all positive effects from each other and then change speed bar of all targets by 50 percent i mean come on man this is insane this is unavoidable it cannot be countered and it starts off full so first turn you're using this on all their room buffs and all everything they've already built up automatically eliminated so this guy is incredible i really wish this if this ability had applied everywhere else too man this would be an overkill literally everywhere but on war offense, that's why it's so important, and uh, countering as guardians is phenomenal. His passive ability gain 20% damage, gain 30% uh, armor on war offense. On spawn, apply offense offer two turns to all Fantastic Four allies. On spawn, apply deflect. Oh man, gain additional 30% damage. So this is all on war offense, guys, and that's why he makes the Fantastic Four the best war offense team against as guardians. Basically, I mean, I, I don't know if they're the best team overall because we got in humans now we have uh, uh, x-men that are really good brotherhood is also really good on war offense but this is truly one of the best you know teams um for war offense at least top four for sure and then tidal wave here just does some splash damage uh attack primary target 200 damage attack adjacent targets on target block bonus attack two more times anybody that blocks is gonna hit them for for some more three turn cooldown so that's actually going you know, going to be used quite a bit here. And then his basic attack for 190% damage, 40% piercing. So nothing special there. But all in all, he just basically makes the Fantastic Four that much better. And that will wrap it up for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video here. Just a little video I thought would be really helpful, not only for Jeremy there, but I think all new players that get into the game, they're fairly new one or two months in, and they're kind of confused. There's so many heroes out there. There's so many teams. And you're looking at all the, like, the top players that are playing for two, three years or whatever the case may be. And you're wondering, damn, I, I don't have all those teams. What do I do? What's my pathway to getting the best possible results in the game? This is it, guys. As Guardians, for me, basically, if I was starting over again, I would run as fast as I can, do all the campaign. Uh, villains will be coming out really soon. Try to get through as much as you can of those. Get the Hela and then just keep literally getting her every single day. Try to get all As Guardians as much as you can. Get yourself Black Bolt. Get the Inhumans. And then uh, go for Ebony Maw and then later on in the game. That's kind of a strategy for the next six months for you to have something to do. Um, I would kind of avoid some of the other teams that you don't really need. And maybe I'll make a separate video on which heroes or which team you should be avoiding earlier on. Those Because there's a bunch of different teams that are mostly for late game players. But anyways, I'm going to end it off here guys. Me and Namor here got to go. But I'll catch you guys on the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out. Mm -hmm.